Hey guys, I haven't seen you in a little while. I kind of miss everybody. Hope you're all doing well. I thought I would start trying to do something where I would read a book to you every day. Uh, so today I'm going to start off with where the wild things are. And then to help you guys follow along while I'm reading it, I'm going to put the pictures up here in the corner so that we can kind of see what's going on. And if you want to pause it, zoom in, anything you want to do, go for it. Um, but after I finish the story, I also kind of want to show you around what I'm doing this whole time. So maybe show you some of my animals. I could show you my family. But I think today we'll start off with an animal. So that would just get an idea of what I'm doing while we're kind of on this little break. And then uh, hopefully I get to see you soon at school. So like I said, this is Where the Wild Things Are. And it's uh, story and pictures are done by Maurice Sendak. Alrighty. So hopefully I got my picture going the way I was hoping to. And uh, let me start it off for you. So it says, The night Max wore his wolf suit and made mischief of one kind. And another. His mother called him Wild Thing. And Max said, I'll eat you up. So he was sent to bed without eating anything. That very night, in Max's room, a forest grew. Do you see how the picture changed? His room looked one way and now something's kind of looking different. And grew. Now it looks even more different. And grew until his ceiling hung with vines and the walls became the world all around. And an ocean tumbled by with a private boat for Max and he sailed off through night and day. And in and out of weeks and almost over a year to where the wild things are. And when he came to the place where the wild things are, they roared their terrible roars and gnashed their terrible teeth and rolled their terrible eyes and showed their terrible claws. Till Max said, be still, and tamed them with the magic trick of staring into all their yellow eyes without blinking once. And they were frightened and called him the most wild thing of all. And made him king of all the wild things. And now, cried Max, let the wild rumpus start. And now on these pages, there aren't any words, but you can kind of see what their wild rumpus looks like. So first they're sort of dancing around the moon and it looks like Max is even howling. On the next bit of pages, they're soaring through the trees, hanging on the branches, and swinging around. And this one kind of reminds me of me and my kids. I don't know if you guys do this, but he's having a, like a piggyback ride on one of them, and they're all marching in a parade. Now stop, Max said, and sent the wild things off to bed without their supper. And Max, the king of all the wild things, was lonely and wanted to be where someone loved him best of all. Then, all around, from far away across the world, he smelled good things to eat. So he gave up being king of where the wild things are. But the wild things cried, Oh, please don't go. We'll eat you up. We love you so. And Max said, no. The wild things roared their terrible roars and gnashed their terrible teeth and rolled their terrible eyes and showed their terrible claws. But Max stepped into his private boat 
and waved goodbye. And sailed back over a year, and in and out of weeks, and through a day. And into the night of his very own room, where he found his supper waiting for him. And it was still hot. So I hope you guys really like that story. I think it's very event, uh, yeah, eventful and imaginative. I don't know if you guys are using your imagination and creating stories like this in your mind or in your room. Are you getting sent to your room and then you're imagining that it's becoming a jungle and you have to sail across the sea and things like that? Think about that. What would you do if you had to go to your room? What, what world would you step into? Would you make a jungle? Would you make a desert? I think I would make a mountain so I can go hiking up high, really, really high to the sky and see lots of animals and plants, but I'm not sure. What would you guys do? Um, now I'm going to go ahead and switch the video. I'm going to take you outside and I want to show you a peacock. I have peacocks all around, all around my property and they like to wander around and eat grass and just kind of mingle. Some of them have big, beautiful feathers, so I'm going to do my best to find some of those for you and uh, I hope you enjoy. I look forward to seeing you guys again soon. All right? Bye. All right, so I found a couple of them walking around in my mom's backyard, actually. This one right here, because it doesn't have the long feathers, it's actually a female. So this is a girl, so it's actually a pea hen. And you can also tell because it has a green neck where the boys have a big blue neck. So just behind that one, this is a peacock. So this is, he's got the big blue pretty neck. But he also has these really long, interesting feathers. These ones are kind of neat. I'm going to see if I can find another one that's sitting up high and you can kind of see more of the feathers. But because it's raining, you're not really going to see them opening it up. All right, so you're going to hear lots of birds in the background because everybody's hiding from the rain. But here's another peacock. And he, I forgot to mention, he also has striped uh, feathers on his wings. That's kind of like a zebra almost. So anyhow, if I come all the way down, you're going to see his big, beautiful tail. All of these feathers have one of these little eyes inside of it. It's like a big blue eye in the middle of this green and copper uh, tail. So when he spreads them all out, he can make them very big. And I think I have a picture of it I'll show you guys also. But when he spreads them out, it's to scare things away in case there's a big animal that's trying to scare him or hurt him. So he actually is pretty protective and becomes a very, very big bird. Now this is a special treat. We have two albino peacocks. Albino means that they were born completely white. So you can see that he obviously does not have any of the colors. No big, beautiful uh, blue eye tail feathers and uh, definitely not a different colored neck. So an albino means that it was born completely white and has no color. It's almost like if I gave you a blank piece of paper and asked you to color it in, this one has not been colored in yet. So right now, because they're all walking around, they're also trying to find things to eat. They like to eat little bugs and grass. So this one's going for a walk looking for its meal. So this is actually a pretty interesting picture. The peacocks like to sleep up in the trees. They don't like to sleep on the ground just in case something like a predator is coming to hurt them. And now lastly, this is a picture I found where the feathers open wide and beautiful. So this is what a peacock looks like when it stands all of these beautiful feathers up. I don't even know if I can count how many there are, but I'll bet you there's close to 100. I really hope you guys are having a great time. I miss you all, and I'm going to try and send out another video tomorrow. So I'll see you soon. Bye.